Hello everybody, I am Suntana Hazarika, Professor, Associate Professor of Department of Geology, Kanal College, Dibrugar. Under the initiative of Geological Society of Assam, I am going to present the extra embryonic membrane in birds, which is included in the syllabus of fourth sem measure and CBCS course. The learning outcome of this lesson is the study of the fetal membrane and its various parts like yolk sac, including amnion, chorion, and allantoid or primitive bladder and its different stages of development and the function of extra embryonic membrane. The history of the fetal membranes in chicks is correlated with the presence of an enormous mass of yolk and embryonic life span within a shell. Although the original blastoderm is a small disc, it spreads by peripheral growth and eventually covers the entire surface of the egg. But only the most central region is directly concerned with the formation of the embryo proper. The remaining blastoderm is extra embryonic and it is this portion that furnishes the embryonic membrane. The fundamental set of embryonic membranes in cheek and other Amniotis includes the yolk sac, amnion, chorion, tyrosa in mammals, and allantois, which evolved in relation to the following structures that were already in existence yolk sac, amnion, and chorion, and allantois. All these extra embryonic membrane sacs are composite structures and involve into two germ layers. The amnion and chorion are composed of extra embryonic ectoderm and somatic layer of mesoderm while the yolk sac and allantois are composed of extra embryonic endoderm and clinking layer of mesoderm separated by a space which is extra embryonic kilo. These components are continuous with their counterparts in the embryonic territory of the blastoderm. Yolk sac. Yolk sac is the first of the extra embryonic membranes to make its appearance. The splanchnopleura of the cheek. Instead of forming a closed gut, grows over the yolk surface as extra embryonic extension and eventually encloses the entire yolk to form the yolk sac. The primitive gut has a cellular wall dorsally only with the yolk acting as a temporary flow. However, with the spreading of extra embryonic plecnopleurae about the yolk, the intra embryonic plecnopleura is undergoing series of changes which result in the establishment of a completely walled gut in a body of embryo. Part of the gut which still remains open to the yolk is known as the midgut. But by the progress of the sub and sub folds, the foregut and hindgut increases in extent at the midgut. The midgut is finally diminished until it opens mentally by a small aperture which flares out like an inverted funnel into the yolk sac. This opening is the yolk duct. 
and its wall constitute the narrow yoke stock through which the walls of the yoke sac are still continuous with the wall of the gut. As the neck of the yolk sac is constricted, the omphalomesenteric or the vitellin arteries and omphalomesenteric or the vitellin veins are brought together and transverse the yolk stock side by side. The vascular network in the splenopleura of the yolk sac encompasses it. Apparently, no yolk passes directly through the yolk duct into the intestine. Rather, endodermal cells lining the yolk sac secrete some appropriate digestive enzymes which make the yolk soluble at the spot. This soluble material is absorbed through the lining of the vitellin blood vessels to the circulating blood by which it is carried to all parts of the growing embryo. In older embryos, the epithelium of the yolk sac penetrates deep into the yolk and forms a series of foldings which greatly increase its surface area for absorption. During development, albumin loses water, becomes more viscid and rapidly decreases in bulk. The growth of the elantoid, an extra embryonic structure, forces the albumin towards the distal end of the yolk sac and the albumin is eventually compressed by the yolk sac. The yolk sac absorbs and transfers by way of the extra embryonic circulation to the embryo. Towards the end of incubation period, usually on the 19th day, the remains of yolk sac are pulled into the belly cavity of the embryo through the navel and the remaining contents and the wall of the yolk sac rapidly disappear. Their absorption is completed in the first six days after hatching and the body wall closes behind it. This is the figure of the cheek embryo of six days of incubation with extra embryonic membrane. Amnion. The amnion and chorion are so closely associated during their origin that they are considered together. Both are derived from the extra embryonic somatopleura. The head of the embryo sinks slightly into the yolk and at the same time extra embryonic somatopleura in front of the head forms a fold, the head fold of the amnion. As the embryo increases in length, its head grows anteriorly into the amniotic fold. At the same time, Growth in the somatopleura makes the head fold over the head of the embryo. Due to this, the head soon comes to lie in a double-walled pocket of extra embryonic somatopleura. On the third day, the tail fold of the amnion springs up. The lateral folds of the amnion develop dorsomedianly at a point where the head and tail folds meet, they become fused in a chair like thickening called seroamniotic resi or seroamniotic connection. Since the tail fold of the amnion arises, at a much later stage and at a time 
when the head fold has already grown beyond the middle of the length of the embryo, tail fold is smaller and the zero amniotic connection lies behind the middle length of the embryo. The outer wall of the somatopleuro has an outer layer of ectoderm and an inner lining of somatic mesoderm. The two layers together form the chorion. The inner wall of the folds has the layers reserved, that is, its outer layer is of somatic mesoderm and inner of ectoderm, and the two together form amniotes. When amniotic fold is first formed in front of head of embryo, it consists only part of the extra embryonic ectodermal layer. The lateral fold from the start consists of extra embryonic ectoderm and extra embryonic mesoderm. As the folds of amnion meet, they enclose an amniotic cavity over and around the embryo completely lined by ectoderm. This cavity is at first a very narrow slit between the embryo and the thinner layer of the amniotic fold, but soon a fluid is separated into the cavity by the amniotic epithelium. The amniotic fluid does all that is necessary to prevent dissociation. Unstriped muscle fibers develop in the mesoderm on the fifth day and produce waves of contraction that preventing its adhesion to various embryonic membranes or to itself or from friction against it. Chorion. Chorion is an extra embryonic membrane which protects the embryo. It derives from the extra embryonic somatopleura. The outer wall of somatopleura has an outer layer of ectoderm and an inner lining of somatic mesoderm. The two layers together form the chorion. Chorion continues to grow and keep pace with the growing blastoderm and exocil. It grows around the yolk sac and envelops it. The albumin sac is also surrounded by folds of chorion. Elantois, after its establishment, develops between chorion and amnion. Thus, chorion encompasses the embryo and all other extra embryonic membranes. It forms an additional protective umbrella over the embryo. The chorion is one of the membranes that surround the fetus while it is still being formed. In mammals, the fetus lies in the embryotic which is formed by the chorion and the amnion and separates the embryo from the mother's endometria. During development, the embryo grows inside and besides four extra embryonic membranes that protect and nurture it. These membranes are from closest to the embryo to farthest, the umbilical vesicle called the yolk sac in reptiles and birds, the elantois, the amnion, and the chorion. The two innermost membranes 
the umbilical vesicle and the allantois do not surround the embryo but rather sit beside it. The outermost membrane, the amnion and the chorion surround the embryo. These four membranes sit in the endometrium of the female while the embryo is developing and are discharged once the embryo is born. These two are the diagram of phases in the development of fetal membrane. This diagram is also shows the stages in the development of fetal membrane. This diagram also shows the stages in development of fetal membrane. Elantoids. The elantoid is a hollow sac-like structure filled with clear fluid that forms part of a developing amniotic conceptus which consists of all embryonic and extra embryonic tissues. It helps the embryo exchange, get and handle liquid waste. The elantoid along with the amnion and chorion, other extra embryonic membranes, identify humans and other mammals as well as reptiles, including birds as amnion. Of the vertebrates, only the amniotic, that is amphibian and non-tetrapod fish, lack this structure. This sex like structure is primarily involved in nutrition and excretion and is webbed with blood vessels. The function of the elantoid is to collect liquid waste from the embryo as well as to exchange gases used by the embryo. This accessory organ primarily evolved in reptiles and birds as a temporary sex for urinary storage. It differs from amnion and serosa because it arises within the body of the embryo. Its proximal portion remains intraembryonic throughout the development. Its distal portion, however, is carried outside the confines of intraembryonic phylum and becomes associated with other extraembryonic membranes. Elantris grows out late on the third day of incubation as a diverticulum of Plantnopleura from ventral wall of the hindgut, just in front of the anal plate. During fourth day of development, Elantois pushes out of the body of the embryo into the extra embryonic silo. Its narrow proximal portion, which is parallel and caudal to the yolk stalk, is known as elantoic stock and the enlarged distal portion as elantoic vesicle. Fluid accumulating in elantoic a distance making the appearance of its terminal portion balloon like. Elantoic vesicle enlarges very rapidly from fourth to tenth day of incubation, extending into the seroamniotic cavity. It becomes flattened and finally encompasses embryo and yolk sac between the amnion and chorion. In this process, splinic mesoderm of elantois becomes fused with somatic mesoderm of 
chorion to form allantoic chorionic membrane. In this double layer of mesoda, an extremely rich vascular network develops which is connected with the embryonic circulation by allantoic arteries and veins. Through this circulation, allantoic carries its primary function of oxygenating the blood of the embryo and relieving it of carbon dioxide. This is made possible by the position occupied by allantoic close beneath the pora shell only separated from it by the shell membrane. In addition, allantoic cavity continues to act in its primitive capacity as a reservoir for excreta of the kidney or rather the urinary bladder. The growth of embryo involves metabolism of protein with the formation of urea in early stages of development and later excreted materials become chiefly uric acid. These wastes of the embryo when formed are passed down into the hindgut cloaca near its base by Wolfian duct when passed and stored in the allantoid without any effect. The part of allantoid wall also assists in absorption of egg albumin. The allantoid stock becomes narrow as development proceeds and is combined with yolk stock in a single outer covering to form the body stock or umbilical cord. At the time of hatching, body stock is ruptured, distal portion of the allantoid with its contained excretory product is left behind as a shriveled membrane adherent to the broken shell and the place of umbilical cord is filled up. In reptiles, birds and monotremes, the structure first evolved in reptiles and birds as a reservoir for nitrogenous waste and also as a means for oxygenation of the embryo. The oxygen is observed by the allantoid through the egg shell. In marsupials, in most marsupials, the allantoid is a vascular having no blood vessels but still serves the purpose of storing nitrogenous waste. Also, most marsupial allantoids do not fuse with the chorion. An exception is the allantoid of the bandicoot which has a vasculature and fuses with the chorion. In placental mammals, in placental mammals, the allantoid is part of and forms and exists for the development of the umbilical cord. The mouse allantoid consists of mesodermal tissue which undergoes vasculogenesis to form the mature umbilical artery and vein. The human allantoid is a caudal outpouching of the yolk sac which becomes surrounded by the mesodermal connecting stock known as the body stock. The vasculature of the body stock develops into umbilical arteries uh, that carry deoxygenated blood to the placenta. It is externally continuous with the proctodium and internally continuous 
with the cloaca. The embryonic elanthoris becomes the fetal uretus, which connects the fetal bladder developed from cloaca to the yolk sac. The uretus removes nitrogenous waste from the fetal bladder. This is the diagram of a fetal membrane in mammals. Clinical significance. During the third week of development, the elantois protrudes into the area of the urogenital sinus. Between the fifth and seventh week of development, the elantois will become the urethra's a duct between the bladder and the yolk sac. A patent elantois can result in urethral cyst. Functions of extra embryonic membrane. Function of the yolk sac. Yolk sac is the primary organ for nutrition that is digestion and absorption of the embryo. Its glandular wall secretes digestive enzymes which convert the yolk into soluble form. It is absorbed by the yolk sac wall and is sent to the embryo. Function of the chorion. It acts as an organ of respiration and lies in association with elantoid. Functions of amnion. Since the amniotic cavity forms watery pool around the embryo, it serves following functions. It protects the embryo from the danger of desiccation. It protects the embryo against external shock. It protects the embryo from adhesion with itself and embryonic membrane. It helps in the absorption of albumin. Functions of elantois. Elantois is served as receptacle for excretory products. It is connected with the gut. The highly vascular elantochorion comes in contact with the shell membrane and forms embryonic respiratory surface for the embryo. Thank you. Thank you to all for concentrating in my lecture.